And uh, the first person I'm going to bring up is Dr. Ashok Goyal. Now, he is a professor of the School of Interactive Computing at Georgia Tech. So, I mean, I hope maybe there are some Georgia Tech, okay, there's at least one student in the audience, um, or it's his wife or something, I don't know. So, and does research, AI, cognitive services, and he created something called Jill Watson. Has anybody read about Jill Watson? A few hands? Okay, just a few. You're going to meet, well, you're going to hear about how, who, what, and how Jill Watson came to be. So, Dr. Goyal, where are you sitting? You come, up, come on up here and join me. I'm going to be the Oprah Winfrey here. And, uh, I like all right, me. come here. All right, come here. All right. I, I, as I said, I'm going to be the Oprah Winfrey. All right. Excuse me. I hope you notice my glasses match my cape. <laughs> all right. San Francisco, fashion. Okay. Dr. Shook, you, you have done, first of all, you have done, a, you're a great teacher. And Georgia Tech is a great school. So before I even get into to Watson and Jill Watson, um, share with everyone, I mentioned a big focus of ours is education. So would you share with everyone your views about what skills are, I, I'm going to say kids in a very good way. I mean, what, you know, what skills do students, do all of us need now coming into this next era? Yeah. How's it different? Because you've been teaching, it's not your first year, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, what do you think? I too have a few decades behind me. Yeah, right? okay, <laughs> yeah, that, that makes two um, of us. Well, I think in this new era when AI is going to augment human cognition, some skills that will be very important are creativity. How do we think outside the box? Creativity. To, mm. Yeah, because normally you think engineering, and the first word you That's said right. was creativity. Yeah. Uh, how do we think outside the box to design innovative solutions to new problems? And design thinking. How do we think about open-ended, ill-defined problems? You know, usually we think about very routine problems. And systems thinking, how do we think about the interconnectedness of various phenomena that occur. So the question becomes, how do we design learning experiences that can foster creativity, design thinking, systems thinking? So in the AI class that I teach, we use project-based learning extensively. No toy problems. Students are asked to design AI agents that solve real, complex problems, such as passing a test of human intelligence. Now, so I want to, you mentioned design thinking, yeah. right? And um, this is something, actually, we feel really strongly about. IBM has quite deep roots in design, actually. And we've now opened 30 studios around the world. And I think we've hired every graduate in design there is. Um, and it's all about making everything consumable, right? For empathy from the, whoever's using its point of view, whether it's a consumer thing or anything that you do. Now, you, though, have to get this across. It's not just the engineers. How do you think about getting that skill across more than just engineers in the school? So we have to change the uh, educational metaphor. You know, usually education occurs where somebody strange with a strange accent like mine talks and everybody else hears. But we have to move from the educational metaphor where education is full of design studios, where there is criticism, Experience. there is inter experiential. Um, and I think that's the way we move forward. So what prompted you now, we're going to introduce Jill Watson to you. What prompted you to build, I didn't tell them what Jill was yet, so why don't you tell everyone what prompted you to do it and what is Jill Watson? Sure. So the AI class that I teach is a graduate level online class and every semester some 300, 400 students take it. And they post something like 10,000 messages in the class discussion forum, which makes a lot of work for the teaching staff. So I thought perhaps we could use Watson to automate the answering of some of the repetitive questions so that would reduce the load on the teaching staff. Initially, I did not tell these students that Jill Watson, that was the name of the virtual TA, was an AI. And when they learned about it, they were really surprised by it. So let me go into a little bit more detail. I'll show you a couple of examples. So in the spring 2016 class, there were eight human TAs. And we added a ninth TA, Jill Watson. Now, uh, when we built Jill Watson, we started with IBM Bluemix. Uh, and the three APIs that we played around with were natural language classifier, uh, retrieve and rank, and concept insights. Here is an example of the kind of question and answer Jill gives. Uh, Jill gives answers only if her confidence in her own answers is at least 97%. So here is another kind of answer that Jill gives. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of question answer pairs. And here is the challenge for you. One of these question answers pairs is by Jill Watson, the other is by a human TA. How many people in the audience think the one on the left is by Jill? Please raise your okay, hand. Okay, which left are we talking? Their left. Their left, okay. 
<laughs> this one. Okay, I'm modeling it. Okay, yeah, okay. How many people think this is the answer by Jill Watson and the other one is by human? Okay, who thinks it's the one on the left is Jill? Okay, how many people think the one on the right is Jill? Okay, okay the, the right one it looks like. Yes, right. now the correct answer is left. But the point is that Jill's answers are of a quality that is hard to distinguish from human tears. Now, towards the end of the semester, I did tell the students that Jill was in AI. They were thrilled by learning about that. And one of them wanted to nominate Jill for an outstanding teaching assistant. <laughs> <award>. <laughs> Now, you know, when I, when I first heard about this, because I didn't know, I, I didn't know Dr. Goyal, so we sort of read about it in a magazine. So this was, again, a great ecosystem, off doing its own thing. And I said, but didn't these kids look at the name? I mean, would that not have been a little bit of a, did you see, you saw the other names of the TAs. I'm like, did that not stick out? Yeah. But you said, they went and looked, and they're like, no, there's lots of Watsons out there. Yeah, they couldn't find it out. They couldn't figure it out, yeah. And one of the students wanted to take Jill out for a date. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, but what you said was something important before, though. This allowed the real TAs to do what they do best, yes. not answer these kinds of questions, right? Because you said they are flooded over so this stuff. They freed them to focus on the more creative aspects of the class. Um, by the way, notice that Jill chose not to answer this question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, just to wrap this up, this semester I'm again teaching the class on AI. This time there are two sections, online and residential. There are 450 students in all, 15 TAs, 13 are human, two AIs, because now we have two versions of Jill, Jill 1 and Jill 2. Jill, oh, are they gonna be called Jill 1 and Jill 2? That's no, a giveaway. No, this time everybody is operating under pseudonyms. Oh, everyone's gonna have a pseudonym. Because uh, students are actually searching to try to identify which ones are the AI among the human teaching staff. Now we're in the 11th week of this semester, and I can tell you they haven't figured it out yet. And they are, and you're into it already. Yeah. Superb, all right, so Dr. Grail, thank you for thank that. You very Wonderful much. work, all right.